Sup, you beautiful bastard. Welcome back. I got a fantastic Sunday community show for you today. But the first thing, big news. This is the pen ultimate episode. This is the second to last Philip DeFranco show of the year. Meaning on Monday, I'm going to put out a brand new episode of the Philip DeFranco show. And then from there, uh, there's really only going to be shorts on this channel until January 2nd. As far as why shorts, uh, I can knock out like two of those things a day, seven days a week, and it won't interrupt my uh, vacation, which if it did, would likely increase the odds of my wife killing me. I mean, me having a random unfortunate skiing act. Accident. Also, oh no, Lindsay, I really hope I don't have a random unfortunate skiing accident. They're gonna think it was you. So how I wanna start this in case I don't say it tomorrow because I'm bad with goodbyes. One, thank you for another fantastic year. It's wild that we've been doing this for so long, even if you're new. Welcome to the family. And two, how about we just enjoy our time together? You hit that like button and I jump into it. Though of course it is Sunday, so before I do that, we gotta take a look back at the week we just all lived through with a little help from our friend Zed to Bonnie. Oh, he's our friend now, not even our recap correspondent. Zed, how are we closing out this year? If I gotta hear another Elon story or a quote about some woke kids from pussies getting tilted cause a pronoun wrecked their whole shit. Pee wee firing shots at Megan's feet cause he got no hits. Blue checks went from verified to who the fuck is this dick? Hold up, hold up, crypto about to blow up. Sam said he got no jail, cops just fucking rolled up. What's roll about to close up? HBO got no one. Oh shit, Kevin showed up. Hey, you wanna fucking go, son? Beat on, West Coast just got their heat on. They warned about the blizzard. Xbox no smoke up in New Zealand, since I like cuffing season While both Henry and Twin like I just can't wait for the sequel, oh Jesus Yo, it's a bad idea They keep trying to tell me that it's all not real They get fucking mad about the way I feel like it's no big deal You ain't skip no meals, you just skinny I think it's a bad idea Keep on trying to tell me that it's all not real Cinema keep talking about her big ideals and the way things feel You ain't skip no meals, you just grifting Hold up Oh shit, this a joke You ain't fucking laughing just because you're fucking broke Stop it with the booing, I'm just trying to sell my soul Pay too much for tickets at another fucking show My Spotify just rap here with like 30 other clones Oh shit's rough, got a war getting picked up Somebody better get him Chris Judge I asked Andrew Tate to my book club and he got mad Aiden looking at him down bad like a gold calf TikTok about to get banned Congress with the chair damn on both sides Fentanyl is on the wrong ride Mental health is getting hogtied All the nurses going on strike, it's a long fight What's your boss say? Give me crossplay Like a Trump story in a fraud case And a couple milli for a board aid Five dollars driving for you all day, that's right Biggest announcement, America needs a hero who's like a shady accountant That's why Trump's coming out with digital trading cards for the answer Hey, who wants to trade for my blue eyes white clansmen? It's a bad idea, they keep trying to tell me that it's all not real They get fucking mad about the way I feel like it's such a big deal It's a pronoun, dick, not a kitten I think it's a bad idea Keep on saying free speech, but we know it's not real Get a little mad about the way we feel And you drop that zeal It's not politics, E, you just shitty It's not doxing, you fucking moron Whatever, Jesus Oh shit, oh shit, oh shit, we got fusion Back here with the future Cleaner than your blueprints The power of the sun, Spider-Man 2 shit New shit, layoffs hit the news end They marching with the union Rest be going down my Last show of the year, the holidays near Went from broke to working in Apple to rapping news here Fuck all of my fears, take all your chances This is your answer, it's comeback season, you beautiful bastards Say a bad idea They gon' try to tell you that it's all not real They get fucking mad about the way y'all feel Like it's no big deal They ain't skip no meal, they just skinny Tell me it's a bad idea 2023 be coming, coming up a new year If they fucking mad about the way I feel I don't need that seal of approval Cause I got my deal, bitch, you get me? On time? Just in time as always. But now, let's jump into specifics starting with Monday. With there of course being so many reactions to the story about Elon Musk getting booed while on stage with Dave Chappelle. With there being this kind of general consensus that Dave and Elon being friends makes so much sense. With the general reaction being kind of just laughing at how pathetic Elon Musk looked, both during his time on stage where he was being booed and he didn't know what to say, as well as how after on Twitter he tried to characterize it as 90% cheers, though he later deleted that sad claim and tweet. But also the number of comments on that were kind of just a drop in the bucket 
compared to the situation around the school district in Brevard, the one where apparently we had students so out of control, causing chaos, causing all the staff to leave, with a beautiful bastard by the name of Catherine making it seem like while this district in particular was awful, it wasn't an isolated incident. Writing, I've been a public high school teacher for 10 years and I've never seen it this bad. The part that makes it so hard for us is that we're expected to fix everything and we can't. Every moment I spend stopping a fight or managing an outburst is a moment I'm not teaching or trying to develop a positive, safe atmosphere in my classroom, which is what students really need to work on their mental health and try to learn something. When we ask admin for help, all we're told is we're not doing enough to build relationships or create interesting enough lessons because students won't be misbehaving if we were. All we get is accusations for not doing enough instead of genuine help and support, and people wonder why we're quitting in droves. And you had Robin trying to give us some insight into the students there, with her having actually been one in Brevard and clarifying that it's a low-income area known for abusive households. They're saying a lot of their behavior is likely learned at home, but saying at the school itself there are almost no resources for students to get help, as Robin herself, quote, actually reported my family for abuse in high school and two police officers told me it was normal and to get over it, saying they never sent social workers and only did one checkup on me, and saying I have so much frustration for my schooling experience and have little to no trust for many authority figures because of this. But Brevard wasn't the only story about workplace frustrations. Right? We had that situation with the nurses getting fired for sharing what makes them mad at work, aka their icks. We saw that a handful of y'all felt that what the nurses did was fine or justified, saying in defense of those nurses, I was recently in the hospital for a week with pancreatitis and during that time I had five different patients share a room with me. Four of those five treated the nurses like they were their personal servants. I couldn't believe what the nurses had to put up with. And people saying they're being unprofessional or acting like these nurses said these things to the patients. But at the same time, the vast majority we saw commenting on this understood why the nurses got in trouble. One group saying, hey, it's okay to be frustrated about work, but posting it to TikTok lacks professionalism and tact. Others also feeling that the nurses were in a unique position because they're working with vulnerable people. And Skylar specifically adding, nursing is different to complaining about other jobs because you're dealing with vulnerable people in the worst moments of their lives. Talking about how the tomato soup wouldn't stack at Kohl's or how this person at your workplace peer pressured everyone to do a secret Santa is not the same as complaining about a cancer patient being disoriented or a woman who just gave birth asking silly questions. And then let's talk about Flaviar. Flaviar, if you don't know, is a personalized spirit subscription offering you the finest scotch, bourbons, tequilas, and more. And what's cool with them and why they're a sponsor of the show is they're fantastic whether you're a spirits newbie or you already know your shit. Right? Because their spirit subscriptions, they offer you a choice of a personalized tasting box that comes with three premium samples, a coaster, and a guided virtual tasting. Or you can get an entire bottle you pick out yourself. And they got you covered for whatever you're looking for. Scotches, bourbons, or posada tequilas. Maybe that's more your style. Personally, I use a subscription box to kind of figure out what I like, which is why it helps the Flaviar's team of experts design your tasting so you can try every type of spirit and see what works for you. Plus, y'all, Christmas is in 11 days. Flaviar memberships are a perfect last minute gift for anyone 21 and older. So just go to flaviar.com slash DeFranco and use code DeFranco for an 11% discount or a free bottle of whiskey, depending on your membership type. And then on Tuesday, we had a lot of people talking about this kind of revelation, or at least the reporting that a ton of individuals in our military and law enforcement agencies are on the far right. And there we saw comments like, I'm a Navy veteran. The Oath Keepers approached me at some point after I got out. They tried to make it sound like a social group for anyone that swore to uphold and defend the Constitution. And then adding, I went to the website they provided and there was a guy in a powdered wig talking about getting ready to fight the government. I haven't had anything to do with them since then. And as a former Marine and white male who was a bit disgruntled about my treatment after leaving the service, I see a lot of the targeted BS from the right. Many of my friends follow Oath Keepers and other organizations. They promise to fix the system and take care of their own. As a disabled vet, I hate the system we currently have to care for our service members, but I don't want to solve that with violence. You also had others talking about how when they were in the service and directly told about how to see signs of extremism, they were fought the entire way when calling it out. But to be clear, like this was not universal, with many who said they were service members saying they never noticed the problem. But also their experiences didn't lead them to discount the possibility that there were far-right shitheads next to them. Saying things like, I was an army medic and I'm glad to not have really seen that kind of problem when I was in, but it truly makes me sad to think about it. You have someone next to you that had your life in their hands and is supposed to have your back, but because of their viewpoint could lead to your death. It just sucks. We also talked about AI a bit on Tuesday. Fortunately, there was far less contentious this time around. John had a great story about talking with a CVS chatbot. The situation just sounds like surreal and hilarious and also like the bot at times seemed more human. But one of the topics that dominated was this Aiden Ross story where we had people saying it seems interesting that Aiden Ross definitely seems like he could use help reading. What does a fascist mean? Far right authorization on you on ultra does it ultra ultra nullity. Oh my God. Ultra analyst anal, analyst political ideology movement characterized by dictator leadership centralized autocracy, militarism, for, forcible suppression, suppression of opposition. So I don't know what that means, bro. I swear to God. I don't know what the f fascism is. I don't know what the f that is. Benito Mazzulli and Giviante Gen Gen Genitale. 
and Jason Stanley. Like, who the f*** are these people, bro? And this at the same time, because Andrew Tate appeared to want a more illiterate world, with Michael there also pointing out in a great twist of irony that Tate actually has a book for sale that's all about learning life lessons from someone else. We also had people commenting about how Ross is just a product of the education system, saying it's really common for this generation to not know how to read. The method of teaching kids implemented in the 90s and used since teaches kids to make guesses as to what words are instead of sounding them out. The U.S. education system has only taught about 60% of kids to actually read for a whole generation. Side note, and I mean this in the nicest way possible, fucking commas, use commas. <laughs> It took me three swings to read that sentence. Also, just to push back a little bit, the reason they do this is because that's how the brain actually works anyway, is when reading words, like regardless of language. And that's on top of the fact that English has a series of multiple writing rules from various languages that all clash with each other. So sounding it out could make little sense unless you know that X comes from German and thus follows those rules, or from French so it has a different set of rules to sounding it out. But also as easy as it was to bash Ross over his shocking reading ability, like I offered, we also saw some praise over his decision to not platform Kanye. But for many, they also still didn't agree with him platforming Tate. Also, so a, a quick thing about this episode, uh, there was the incident where I think I think I said Maori, and I'm not even sure if I was that off. I don't like going back and viewing my mistakes, but I wanted to acknowledge it. It is Maori. I'm still going to probably be off. I'm fucking horrible with tapped R's or anything like that. Also, I'll say I feel like I've been very transparent about just being shitty at pronouncing things that are like foreign to me. Literally 85% of my fixes where I have to go back and refilm something is because I pronounced a name wrong, except on my shorts because the writer that helps me with those likes when I accidentally mispronounce things because it boosts engagement. So then there's just some video of me mispronouncing something that 7 million people have seen. But also, and I feel like I've talked about this, I, I feel like a certain level of cringe when I have like a certain tone and a certain cadence and then there's a foreign word and I just completely fucking switch up. So then I'm trying to make sure I'm not saying Puerto Rico. But then at the same time, I'm not talking about a sentence and then going Puerto Rico. I can't say it. I can't roll my R's. <laughs> Puerto Rico. It doesn't even need that much of a role in a messing it up. But anyway, main point of the story, I got a big, fat, dumb mouth to deal with it. And then, though, I will say on Wednesday, I got a lot of props for my pronunciation. To the delight of all you British beautiful bastards, when I said twat, you were like, yes! You didn't say twat! And of course, that's because if I'm going to curse at you, I want you to understand. But also, the praise I got there was nothing compared to how much y'all hated that streamer being an asshole to a woman who was just answering a question. Where he asked, Curvy, where the fuck have you been? She responds, well, my mom died and he responds with oh my god we'll tell you what miss dirty curvy you know what we're not gonna do we're not gonna talk about it in my chat it's friday and that is a whole big bucket of bummer. And pretty much everyone was on the fuck this guy bandwagon. With many pointing out that it's already hard to navigate a loss like this. And Chris and others saying things like him yelling at someone whose mom just passed for killing the vibe was much more a buzzkill than just being a normal human being and saying, I'm so sorry for your loss. Which yeah, I think is a good way to acknowledge it while also, you know, not diving into it and focusing just on that and moving on if he really didn't want the whole conversation to be about that. Also, I do want to note, despite his initial apology and then remember that eight minute video I talked about where he was like, actually, never mind. He has continued to act like the victim in the situation and saying, of all the people, because understand, it's not just me. Even massive streamers were speaking out against this. I saw the likes of Moist Critical and Hassan Piker saying, yeah, it's not fun when someone's trauma dumping, but that's not what fucking happened here. YouTubers or Twitch streamers or whoever, they're, they're not your therapist. But if you ask a question and they provide a simple four-word answer, you don't need to fucking lose your shit on them. But hey, while it doesn't appear to be the case right now, hopefully at some point he can grow from whatever the fuck this is. And can maybe when he, he doesn't feel so attacked, he can like look at what he did with, with you know, regular people eyes instead of being so defensive and then leaning into it. Or if not, uh, hopefully this is the most that he'll ever matter. Because what he just showcases is like a special kind of toxic. But I always, even if I don't mention it, I always hope that people can grow from their shitty decisions and actions. And I feel like that's possible because I mean, when I look back five years, 10 years, 15 years of not just who I was, but what I was publicly saying online, I'm like, yeah, fuck that that guy, but also that guy was me. And I pride myself on how much I've been able to grow, especially because I feel like for adults, it, it's hard to change without trauma. But also on Wednesday, a story that generated a lot of conversation was about the youth mental health crisis. With this lovely lover telling us, when I was in high school, graduated in 2015, the system in place for mental health issues was not only unhelpful, basically non-existent, but I actually was punished by teachers for my depression. Almost didn't graduate and had the truancy police called my home multiple times. I was lucky my family got me the support I needed, but damn did my high school make me feel like I was a bad 
bad kid because I was and still am, but I go to therapy and take medication to manage mentally ill. We also heard that even when therapy is available to the students, there's a ton of red tape and quote, the problem for me at least is the parents. Writing some are on board with counseling while others can't believe their kid might need it or want it. So the kids reach out and get shut down by their parents, don't want their parents to know or are afraid to ask. It's awful. We're collecting data on it and my coworker in the high school saw over 200 kids last month alone. It's troubling how many are dealing with clinical anxiety or depression or both. Also, I'll say that sounds like a fucking crazy workload. 200 kids a month, that would be what, nearly seven kids a day? And that's assuming they don't see the same kid twice in a month. But also the entire situation wasn't just an American issue. With comments like UK resident here, we didn't have counselors or psychiatrists at all. We were encouraged to talk to our teachers if we ever needed to. The nicer ones usually actually seem sincere in offering the help. But people don't want to talk to their subject teachers about their home life. Sure would have helped me if I had access to it. Although it appeared that in some places at least the complete system is not broken. With someone sharing, I had a massive drug addiction back then and asked a teacher what to do. They sent me to the school counselor who got me into treatment. Besides talking to my parents, which they helped me with, it was very helpful and not as anxiety filled as I thought it'd be. So yeah, this was late 2000s. But also, I do want to note here, while I absolutely love the conversation and, and people sharing their stories, I do want to note that when I talk about these things and I share the comments, understand these are anecdotal. The data is the data with these stories. It is a very key thing that we need to remember and then kind of just take these stories as a kind of some of the filling. Which on the note of filling brings us to the last standout story of Wednesday, porn. Easily one of my favorite reactions to the news was this. No longer the number one search term, rather than no. replaced by lesbian. Yay! <laughs> Though also there, I will say I, I did a little digging and I found out actually why hentai dropped. It appears we have AK Dragoon to blame because they shared, I got COVID and wasn't feeling it for those two weeks. Know that I'll redouble my efforts here in 2023. So to the rest of you weebs out there, remember to do your part. Just search the name of your favorite anime and then just never get to look at it the same again. And then finally we have Thursday. And man, y'all had a lot of words for parents. Like I still stand by my stance of like, I don't want to like really hand hammer in that you should be doing this with your kid. But it did look like a lot of you agreed with me that some personal accountability is needed. Right? I talked about taking Fortnite away from my kids. And you had Sam saying, anything but parenting your own children. Imagine going through the trouble of suing Epic Games versus turning off your child's internet, losing hope for humanity. While Rookie thought the lawsuit was insane and that quote, as someone who has been working with children for over 10 years, it just reinforces my belief that parents are refusing to raise their children. They get raised by teachers or professors or iPads, or in the worst cases, they get raised by the streets. Tragic. And possibly the crazy easiest solution to keep kids off video games? Just do things with them. You also had Jeremy saying the, the idea of parents finding an excuse for why their kids might suck is nothing new. Writing, for as long as people have been able to transfer information to a medium, people have been blaming it for their own shortcomings as a parent. Any popular trend is an easy target to shift the blame to. If your kid plays too much Fortnite or whatever, as a parent, you have the power to change that and you don't even need to leave your couch to do it. However, some of you argued that heavy gaming itself can be addictive. Or it's a sign that something's wrong, it's a coping mechanism. And arguing that by simply taking away the game, that could actually lead to coping elsewhere. Going on from that, we also had the conversation around Congress's decision to ban TikTok on government devices. Some of you, like Harrison, were curious why TikTok in particular was being banned. Right, obviously it's owned by China and all, but he wasn't wrong when he said, the weird thing about TikTok being banned from government devices is the fact that other social media aren't. These are work phones. Why do you need to have Facebook on it if your job isn't the media relations department? And then of course, finally, the nerdy science story of fusion technology, with tons of you really here for it. Jamie writing how crazy it is to see the tech of tomorrow today, saying the nuclear fusion thing is absolutely insane insane to me. I remember learning about it in school as some hypothetical, but actually hearing it worked is crazy. It may not be what we'll get in our homes anytime soon, but it's still a huge step knowing we can do it. Also, I'm just happy we managed to explain an outrageously complicated topic in a digestible way, and it didn't really feel like we missed anything. I think talking to experts certainly helps with that. But we also had some questions from people like, the one thing that I was wondering about nuclear fusion was that if it failed, does it have the ability to create a nuclear disaster like Chernobyl, or if it failed, it could just break equipment or something? Now, normally, I'd say take my response with like a grain of salt, you know? Uh, to be completely honest, I'm not a nuclear scientist. But that's why I'm going to quote the International Atomic Energy Association, because they have answered the question directly, and they say no, because fusion energy production is not based on a chain reaction, as is fission. With them going on to explain that plasma is superheated to keep the reaction going, and once the process fails, the plasma quickly cools and the reaction stops. So it's kind of the opposite of nuclear energy as we know it, right? which requires water to keep the reaction cold or it gets out of control, which, in very specific circumstances, can lead to a disaster like Chernobyl. Although, even with that, I do want to note, nuclear energy is still among the safest and cleanest sources of energy. Chernobyl happened because people weren't aware of how its reactor actually worked due to being lied to. But hey, that's where I'm gonna end this Sunday show. Once again, thank you for watching this and also being with me the, the rest of the year, unless somehow this is your first show, in which case definitely subscribe, but also there's one more episode for the rest of the year. But hey, I'll see you right back here in less than 24 hours because my name's Philip DeFranco. You've just been filled in. I love yo faces and I'll see you Monday.